Hi everyone, I am McDysis, and this is Clock Tower 3. Funny enough, I actually think I have a video of this way back in the day, where I did kind of an explained run of this. However, uh, since we've grown as a channel, and since I've gotten better at video games, uh, I'm actually much better at this game than I used to be. So, as a result, uh, here's a good reference. When I explained it, I got a 129. I currently have a 118. There's a lot to fill in. We're going to fill that in. Anyway, uh, yeah, Clock Tower 3. Silly brain girl genre. I don't know what that means. At least in terms of music. Uh, I don't know. I'm going to go with the Shags. Let's go with that. The Shags. Uh, philosophy of the world. Anyway. Going into Clock Tower 3, the early game is pretty easy. You're just playing it normally. I know that sounds kind of simple, but we're going to take some time not to talk about where exactly we're going, because this is going to be very easy. You go to the door, you go to the fireplace, you go to the painting. That's easy. We're going to talk about what kind of game Clock Tower 3 is and what you should know. Uh, this game is probably one of my favorite of the Clock Tower runs, because you don't have to worry about stalker mechanics. You finally stumped me? Well, uh, no, people do it all the time. <laughs> That's not stumping me. I just told you what it was. In fact, I got it right. You can read it, in fact. I don't do meme genres. That's not, it's not a genre. You just kind of named a random thing, which actually I named properly. So, any more break core? You thought wrong. The early game is mostly about getting your tools of the trade, which is going to be water, and it is going to be teaching you kind of about the stalker mechanic. Uh, so let's talk about that bar on the top left. That is a combination of your health and, let's say, ammo. You get three water throws. Water is important because it's both a key item and it is also a defense item. We'll be using this as both. Uh, the bar on the top left is not a health bar, but it is actually a panic bar. Also, we're going to throw the water from kind of a distance. Uh, if you feel a giant vibration in your controller, you got right. And you can see that counter went down by one. Anyway, if that bar fills up all the way, you are going to be in panic, and you will be, uh, you know, dying. Uh, one hit in panic will kill you unless you have a certain item, which I'll point out some items that will be helpful. Now, will I be going for every one of these items? No, actually. I'll be going for some of them, but I will highlight which ones you can pick up for safety, because there's a lot of safety items in this. Also, the shags would absolutely be silly girl music. It's literally three silly girls. I think that's more than breakcore. Breakcore is kind of just, eh. All right, so now we're in World War II. The game can truly begin. It's still gonna teach us tutorials. This is going to be a puzzle. There's gonna be like the dead. Uh, these are like ghosts that are doing hauntings. Um, casually, they have a lot more meaning than the speed run. In the speedrun, we're going to clear a few of these, but they're all going to be very easy. For the first one, this ghost will block your path. So what we're going to do is we're just going to give it the ring. This is a mandatory one. You got to do it. It teaches you about the concept of spiritual healing. Uh, there's a lot of these throughout the game. Uh, for this one, though, it's just going to be right here. You're just going to... That's kind of the tutorial. You can't really pass until you do it. Uh, there is an item there. I recommend grabbing it if you're new. Uh, that will actually give you an extra hit if you are on death, uh, if you're in panic. Uh, that will actually protect you. And no, you're, you're good. So, it's good to grab. Yeah, Clock Tower 3 is pretty simple. Then for Rai, they might be. I want to clock tower water. Well, Capcom doesn't currently own Clock Tower. They're in like conjunction with Clock Tower, but it's weird. Sunsoft is the company that owns Clock Tower. However, Capcom's name is on the new Clock Tower game coming out. So, I don't know their exact relationship, but they'd probably have to go through Sunsoft at bare minimum. Anyway, this guy's RNG. Uh, don't let him grab you. Uh, there's always a ghost there. It's pretty rough. If you want to cure him, the item's down there, but we don't need to do that because this is a speed run. 100% has different routings. Anyway, a neat little trick you can do is, like, the moment the camera shifts, you can just throw the water. Which is, like, through the wall and surprisingly far away. It's really, really weird that you can do that, right? Oh, good samurai pod, yeah. 
All right, so one thing to be uh, turning up really early, be careful of your water throws. Uh, water throws are very, very particular because uh, you, you saw I refilled the water earlier. We only have enough water for what we're doing. We're not going to have any more unless otherwise noted, meaning do not randomly throw it at every enemy. You're going to have to make through a lot of through this game without the extra water because a lot of the game's keys are locked behind these water doors. Meaning, if you don't have them, you don't progress the game. I'll say I didn't love tech, though we have a nice day today. Now it's doing sailing. Right now, we have no water, and we're going to be getting introduced to our first enemy of the game. Our first real enemy, I should say. This is going to be Sludgehammer. So we're going to just stop right by this red thing. Uh, by the way, it's triangle to skip dialogue and start to skip cutscenes. So you can easily get soft blocked. No, you'll just waste a lot of time and have to go find a water source. Difficulty with this walkthrough? There's no difficulty. This is just default. Clear mode's a new game plus thing, so we're not doing clear mode. Anyway, make sure you grab the actual item. There we go. And now we're going to just run through him. This is a lot easier than it looks. Like, you just run to the side of him, he will never hit you. And unless you're taking your time, then in which he'll hit you. The answer to this is right here, uh, just on this. There's an invitation. Uh, this is going to be the grand key for things that you'll need. However, we're still being chased, and that is obviously going to be bad. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to interact with the chair right here. Uh, this is going to be your introduction to panic events. Uh, you can use certain items to actually uh, avoid encounters. Uh, they kind of uh, allow you to escape for a moment. So we're going to skip the actual cutscene. She rams into the chair. Now, something annoying I should mention about Clock Tower 3 that I learned when I first started running this game. Um, Clock Tower, also, there's a, uh, there's a perfume in this room. If you want it, you can grab it right there on that side. Uh, I will not be grabbing it, but if you want it, it's there. Something annoying about this game is that you're going to have to do at least one uh, casual playthrough. Now, I know that should be the default, and it's not a big deal for that, but uh, this game has unskippable cutscenes on a fresh file. It's weird. So you need to play a, a file with a memory card attached. So if you ever tried like, running this game without a saved file, uh, you may have noticed that. I know I did that when I started off. It's really annoying. Let's see. Okay, not so bad. Alrighty, now we're inside the concert hall. The concert hall is going to be where the run really starts to vary. Uh, this area has some pretty brutal RNG, which can be quite unfortunate. So depending on how you play the game is going to be very dependent on Sludgehammer here. Uh, the extra perfume can be nice. Uh, I think it's like perfume is the item or lavender or whatever the hell it's called. Uh, we're just gonna run away from him. Uh, I got no damage. Uh, you'll be getting some panic there normally. I got lucky, so that's actually really good for me. And you're gonna interact with this thing right here twice. Mad Mac, you've been able to prime gaming for four months. Enjoy the emotes and the scissors, and thank you. Hope you're doing good. And cheers. Alright, so that brings down an item, and it puts back up the blockade. So you can just get the item with that. Um, the answer is going to be 104. Uh, you don't actually need to read it, but you do need the note to tell you, hey, the answer is 104. So we have that. Ram Ranch, we need a sub for that. So, his position will be RNG here. It always is. If he's in the middle, that's bad. If he's there or on the sides, that's good. Pretty much, you don't want to get panic. Panic is bad. At this point, what we'll be doing is... You'll be going to the safe, and then you'll be going around because he's going to be chasing you the way you came in. Anyway, like I said, the answer will be 104. Or 103, sorry. 103, not 104. I'm used to moving it four times. Okay, 103. And you put 104, it's wrong. 103. Sorry, my muscle memory does better than my brain sometimes. Anyway, right here is the, uh, what, perfume? 500 water, okay. 500 water. My someone's lying to me? It'll be fine. That was a wonder, Greek. So I did get a hit. That's a bit unfortunate. 
Um, ideally, I'm going to hope that panic goes down. Luckily, I didn't get too much panic earlier, but having too much panic is bad. If you have too much panic, that will not be good at all because we're going to get a big scare right here. Uh, you might need to use lavender water, possibly hug the wall. You want to be as close to those like ropes as possible because if you're too inward, what will happen is he will uh, knock you down. Getting a knockdown is not good. Uh, right now, what we're going to be doing is a special trick. I'm going to be throwing water right here. That's going to break the door. While the door is breaking, I'm actually going to open this up and I'll wait. That allows the animation to rub off and then I can just open it up without having to worry about the water, uh, you know, door taking too much time. If you decide just to wait at the door, what will happen is you'll get hit. By opening that door, it prevents Slow Chamber from continuing to move, and then you can proceed forward. That is how it goes. We got it, chat. We good. We good. We good. Yeah, I hope you're doing good, Mamnaki. Alright, so if you're learning the game, what I suggest is on the right side of this upcoming area, there's going to be an invisibility ring. Not here, but I'll point it out when we get there. Uh, but first things first, this is going to be a neat trick. A, a trick, but it's manipulation. So, Sledgehammer's here. Wait for him to move. If you throw the water any earlier than him moving, he will attack you. And it's really bad. You'll get body blocked trying to exit through this. Oh, good game. Thank you. There we go. On that right hole will be an invisibility ring. If you need it, it is there. Uh, a lot of these items will come in handy if you are having trouble avoiding the stalkers or, you know, you're about to die. Um, lavender water just straight up heals you and invisibility rings prevent you from getting, you know, they can't see you, so it's good. Another thing about this game I would say is definitely movement. A lot of horror games are very movement based. So, um, realistically, the best I can say about that is try not to walk like an alcoholic and try to walk in, uh, you know, as close to walls as you can. Uh, right here is actually going to be another little bit of tech. You want to run against the couch. If you're not touching the couch, you'll get knocked back and scared. That's bad. Anyway, RNG moment. You have to consider what you're doing right now. So, if he follows you, you must throw the water. If he stops, you don't have to throw anything. He stopped. I got good luck. Uh, he doesn't always stop. Sometimes he does, sometimes he doesn't. Obviously, if he stops, that is going to be the better RNG, because you don't have to throw the water and take time to do that. Um, you would just lose time if you have to throw the water. Uh, hug the outside there, because you don't want to get dialogue twice. Uh, now, this is RNG. You're just going to cross. It sucks. What's considered good normally is getting two per travel. So two there, two back is considered okay. You can get technically nothing. If you get that, that's perfect. Uh, some runners will reset if they get two total. Or they, you know, if they don't get two total. I'd buy this for a dollar. Thank you for the 100 bitties, Kuaya. I have to go to work. Glad yeah, I got have a nice day. To say take, take it easy. Have, have a great rest day. Of day. You know, we might wonder. We might just need to. Now, the only thing about this is don't fall off. I know that sounds easy. Um, I've done it once because I was reading chat. And it kills the entire run because it's a straight up death. And if you die... Oh, by the way, I should mention. If you die here, you go back to the beginning of Concert Hall. Uh, I've been here for about seven minutes or six minutes right now. Also, that was actually pretty decent RNG. I've been here for about six minutes of, you know, real time in the Concert Hall. If I died at any moment here, I go back to the beginning of Concert Hall. And you lose about six minutes from dying. Anyway, hug the wall. You'll be able to run through him. At this point, your health will be good enough not to have to worry about the hit. And then, where is the exiting? Uh, the exit's pretty easy. And that's Concert Hall. So, every stalker is going to have two phases. There's going to be a uh, stalker phase and a fight phase. Um, there's going to be a variety of strats you can do, and I'll try to break down each of them. However... What I'm going to be doing is definitely going to be more comfortable to me. I'm going to say right now that if you're really interested in learning this game, I highly recommend a runner named Bathike. Uh, he is a Japanese speedrunner of a lot of Clock Tower games, and he is very good at Clock Tower 3. Uh, he has some strategies that are absolutely wild. Uh, I will be attempting some of them potentially, but I'm not going to bank on it. Uh, anyway, uh, what we're actually going to do is we're actually going to be hugging the right side here. Position does actually matter more than you think, uh, because the tailor is going to be on the right side. 
Uh, the only downside here is you will be fighting the camera a bit. Uh, this game is a bit rough. So if I ever look like I'm readjusting movements, uh, it's because of the camera angles in this game and also shit like the fountains. See, a clean run. We're doing good, Zach. Still be doing good. This door always has a bit of lag. I don't know why. It just doesn't open until he enters the room. It's like waiting. And funny enough, all you needed from all you needed from the theater were pliers. That's it. So in theory, if you can get in this room early, you can probably beat the whole uh, the level immediately. But for right now, we do not have a way of doing that. Anyway, you'll be grabbing one green arrow from this room. Green arrows are going to be a very special currency that will be very present throughout the run. Uh, we're also going to be having red arrows, and these are going to be used for very particular fights. Uh, I'll be talking in depth about the fight system as we go. The fight system is going to be very, very important to Clock Tower 3. Uh, a lot of people struggle with the fight system for Clock Tower 3 and casually not learning how to do the combat in this game is definitely going to be the the run killer. It's going to be what a lot of people struggle on and it ends up forcing like the final boss fight to take like 50 like 30 minutes per attempt and it's really rough. Because health items aren't going to matter for the final boss. The only thing that will matter is arrow currency, which if you don't have that then oh boy. I know, no restra actually we'll get something like a restraining order. Anyway, same deal as the first. Uh, we're going to be hugging uh, this side of the wall. Uh, we don't really need to go to the other side because you just need to get back to the concert hall. Uh, the goal is to take the... Well, I should mention the goal of every level story-wise. The goal of every level story-wise is that there's one ghost in particular who feels sad and you need to make them happy. So you need to find their special item and you need to return it to them. In this case, it's like a father's pocket watch. And you're returning it to the little girl who was beat up by Sledgehammer. The cutscenes of the game are wild. You've never seen them. Anyway, it is now time for the boss fight as an eraser. So, uh, chat can spam Icy Magic. It's a magical girl emo, because this is actually a Sailor Moon horror game. Um, what we're going to be banking on is getting something called a, um, well, we call it Spirit Bombs, because it looks like the Spirit Bomb from Dragon Ball Z. But I know I'm just quoting different anime uh, references here. But, first things first, during the health right here, Mash Triangle. Uh, you will skip the bar of health kind of increasing. And what you're looking for is a slam attack. So you want to get a binding. Bindings in this game are going to vary per enemy. Oh, I got the guarantee, but I messed it up. That's fine. It's fine. It's fine. There we go. One, two, three, four. We played it well. So, bindings in this game are based per enemy. The first boss and the final boss, if you charge it five times, one, two, three, four, five. If you charge it five times, you will get a binding on Sludgehammer and Lord Burdos. Uh, you can also get a slightly faster fight if you decide to get him in a triangle, albeit it is a bit riskier. Uh, it's going to be about five bindings to get the Spirit Bomb. When you see her kind of aim up, you know you got it. Uh, this will one-shot him. Uh, I definitely messed up in the beginning there because, I, you know, while I got the slam, I didn't expect the slam, so I didn't dodge it. So that's what you do. You dodge the slam, and then you get a five binding. And then you just kind of get out of range so you don't get hit. The bindings in this game, I mentioned Sludgehammer is a five bind. Meaning if you hit him with a five charge, he'll be binded. Um, every other boss in the game, except for the final boss, is actually going to be a six bind. Why is it going to be Clock Towers? Because they wanted three. You wonder how Clock Tower 3 turned into an RE-like? Uh, what's not really RE-like? This is still very much like Clock Tower. Well, not like Clock Tower, but like, it's still a stalker warrior game. I don't think this plays uh, at all really like RE games, because it's also a camera that follows you. Honestly, the closest game to Clock Tower 3 that's not made by, like, that's like not a Clock Tower game is going to be a weird one. It's Fatal Frame. Like, if you're wondering what game most plays like this, Fatal Frame. So, I'm, I talked about bindings and the strategies there. Every boss is going to have their own unique strats. Just understand that you're going to have to get a certain amount of bindings. Uh, normally, you want to get a 5 charge on the first boss and last boss, and then a 6 charge on every other boss, and then um, you'll get a Spirit Bomb. Later bosses won't die one Spirit Bomb. They're not all as easy as Sludgehammer. So you're going to be very careful with this. 
as well there's gonna be a variety of strats that one can do i will point them out as we go uh i'm gonna be doing a saver for instance right now uh i'm gonna be going with a more comfortable strat for me for jemima uh meanwhile uh, I, I will highlight what you can do there differently because different people have different strats um, I also know what I'm pretty sure is faster, which is not going to be the strat I'm doing. My route here is going to be a little bit safer, uh, just because I think this is going to be an easier way. And then as you get better at the game, you can kind of adapt. That was an RNG, Jesus. Also, in case anyone's wondering, why don't I go like, oh, you go to this room, then this room, then this room. Routings kind of assume you're going to have an idea, or you can just watch the route and follow along. Like, I don't need to tell you to go to Dick's room, go upstairs, go to the clock. Like, you can see that happening. You have eyes, chat. That was the same dog. Like, direction's kind of one of those things that you should probably play the game and have some idea of where you're going. I feel like it's much more of the uh, the minor things that I'll mention, like, oh, this is why I'm moving like this. Anyway, um, I don't know the puzzle here on Japanese, because the Japanese version has a different puzzle. But in North American versions of this game, it's going to be left, left, right, right, right. So just push this one twice, and then the other one three times. Also, I'll say right now, if you're good at Clock Tower 3, the skills will transfer in terms of movement over to Fatal Frame. Uh, Combat-wise, there's not really anything like this game because it's really awkward. Also, some notes about the arrows while we have time that we're just kind of chilling. And this is going to be a fun note for the arrows. You're going to love this one. Uh, a lot of people don't know this, and you might be wondering, why doesn't she aim? Is she stupid? Uh, you can't aim in this game. Wherever you, uh, wherever you first aim, that's where you're going. So, be careful. Uh, if you want to readjust your aim, what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to fire whatever you're shooting and re-aim. Also, these are portals. It takes two waters to clear them. You're going to be activating both of them. The first one to get here, the second one, you're, that's how you get back. Now, the reason why we're doing that now is because the end of this level, when we're heading back, we're going to be getting a water refresh, and we don't need any water for the actual level. Uh, we can just run past these ghosts. Seems like one and three. Well, Clock Tower 2 is weird because there's two Clock Tower 2s. There's Clock Tower PS1, and then there's also Clock Tower 2 The Struggle Within. But, uh, realistically, neither story matters in context of this game, and there's no relation. Clock Tower PS1 goes directly to Clock Tower SNES, and then Clock Tower 2 The Struggle Within is entirely self-contained, barring, like, loose references. And on Linko, they've been tier 1 for 29 months. Enjoy the emotes and the scissors, and thank you. Hope you're doing good. And cheers. I mean, she's stronger than Goku? The very same. Well, I don't think she'd be Goku, though, because she kind of only works on evil spirits, and Goku's not really an evil spirit. He's kind of, uh, nice. Yeah, the Clock Tower games don't have any real overarching story, and Clock Tower 3 is entirely self-contained. So, that's why it doesn't really matter. Also, I played the other games during the big Clock Tower marathons, which I probably have somewhere on YouTube. Anyway, the answer here is North. Uh, it's weird, because the placement of the cursor in that puzzle is um, sometimes RNG. Uh, you can also skip this cutscene early. I don't know why. I just kind of mash pause during the loading screen and it works. Uh, it's weird. Anyway, I might get grabbed here. If you get grabbed, it's okay. It's minor time loss. Uh, no, I'm good. Okay. Some of the ghosts here are RNG on the position, so if you get unlucky, it's too bad. But yeah, the reason why you don't need any water is because there's no doors that are going to be locked by water here, uh, at least at the moment. And more importantly, the actual uh, stalker doesn't show up until the second half when you come back here. So you're going to be good until then. Anyway, we're going to ignore this body for now. We don't have the item for that just yet. And now we're going to head back. And you'll kind of see in action, like, look at the count right now. If you look at the top left, I have a zero on my water count. Uh, the zero is because I've used all my waters on the on the portals. However, when you approach this right here, there's a cutscene. And, like, I think the cutscene that she's just so amazed by the fountain, she fills up her water automatically. So, you know, for you, that just means you get a water refresh because we're not watching this cutscene. You don't watch cutscenes during a speedrun. If you're behind on time, you can do it, but we're not going to do that here. Anyway, make sure you grab Dick's desk key. It is going to be right here. There is going to be a lavender on the right. 
Uh, if you do need more health, it is there. It is okay if you're running low. Again, you're not going to be amazing at these games immediately, and that's all right. You know? That's why, like, I'm not grabbing these, but I'll point out where they are. Fox Boy. Thank you. For 25 months. Enjoy the emotes and the scissors. And thank you very much. Hope you're doing good. And cheers. Hi. Alrighty, so we're going to be having a slight deviation from the older route right now. Uh, back in the day, we weren't grabbing as many green arrows because we had the exact amount needed. Now, we're going to be grabbing more because the exact amount needed has changed. But I guess really, it doesn't really change. It just, we're grabbing, we're grabbing more green arrows. Uh, green arrows are really good for the boss fights. They're going to help later, and the more you have, the more you can use. I mean, I, that's kind of an interesting revelation, but you get the point. Alrighty, so, it's gonna be the right drawer. Uh, last time I was kind of the center. What we're gonna be doing is inside this library, there is a free arrow grab. It takes a very minor of time, very minor amount of time to get, and it is worth grabbing. Right here. Now, I want to mention, if you do not grab this arrow now, you will never get to grab it. You can go through the desk on the front side, however, it is a little bit more awkward with the camera. Uh, I've done it a few times, but going around is a little bit safer. Anyway, uh, the reason why you want to grab the arrow first is because grabbing the film actually kicks you out. It'll throw you to the other room. So, if you don't grab it now, you will never get to get this arrow ever again. I mean, in theory, I guess you just could walk back and grab it, but just grab the arrow first. Funny enough, you actually end up in the library later in the game, but the arrow's gone if you if you like if you try doing it. It's weird. 1978. Oh, of course, BKD. And thank you, Seedlings. I thought it'd be fun to do kind of like an explain thing today. And you know what? It has been fun. I'm having a good time. Yeah. Uh, right now, we're just heading back to that portal. And it's kind of like the hub. Every level is going to have its own hub. And the hubs are going to, like, change. It's kind of weird because, like, it's much more linear than you think it would be. Uh, don't worry about my splits right now. My splits can be a little bit weird because I'm comparing to... Uh... I never deleted, like, my sum of best, I don't think. So it's kind of banking on both the old route and the new route. Love hubs. Well, there you go. I love the hub. Right now we have four waters. You're going to need all of them. Uh, you're going to be very careful with what we're doing here. And uh, we're going to be hitting our next stalker. So stalkers are going to be much more frantic. General movement's easy. Uh, stalkers are not. Anyway, there's a shortcut right here. You opened it earlier. Remember this. It's right here. Yeah. One of the fun things about Speedruns Explained, by the way, Old Low Blue, is whenever I commentate on games... Uh, a lot of people do not know how much micromanagement goes into these games. Like, there's a lot of little things that one needs to account for and do. Anyway, there are two pictures on the ground. You need to grab both of them. These are, like, both lore, and also one of them has a key. It's kind of like that thing earlier where it's like, oh, the answer is 103, not 104. I don't know who said 104. And you won't be able to actually solve the answer unless you have the picture. It's kind of one of those games that even though you know the answer, she doesn't know the answer. Alrighty, so the answer right here is this. As weird as this sounds, this is not a cutscene. Like, you, you think it would be a cutscene where the door unlocks? Nope, it just unlocks. Alrighty, we have a lot happening at once, so I'm going to be talking fast. Try to keep up, okay, everyone? Once you enter this room, you're going to be getting Corroder. Uh, there's a really funny cutscene here. If you want to play it, uh, I recommend it. Uh, it's pretty funny. But the moment um, you skip this cutscene right there, you're going to throw your water instantly. Ah, hot, hot, you'll be grabbing this item on the left. This is an invisibility ring. Uh, this is one of the easiest ones to grab. It is necessary. Uh, right here will be an item. You're getting chased, so I'll point it out. Uh, throwing the water doesn't buy you enough time because Corroder is a smash player and you doused him in soap and water and now he is on fire. Uh, so Corroder has a lot more jump scares than Sludgehammer does. Sludgehammer kind of genuinely chases you the way you would expect. Uh, Corroder, on the other hand, you have to be careful. 
So at the corner right before you see that, you gotta throw the water. It's a very tight timing. If you go too far in, you will fall down and get scared. Uh, that way the water will go through the wall, you will hit him. Uh, this is gonna be a fun strat right here. It will save you a water. What we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be waiting on the left side of the door. If you wait right in front of the door, you'll get knocked down. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna wait right here. And they're just gonna run through. Uh, you'll lose them that way. It's actually a pretty easy strat. That wasn't actually. <laughs> I'm glad you liked that one. Uh, and now comes the hard part. So you can use the water here if you want. I will not because I like to I like to yellow it a little bit here. So I like to kind of run like uh, into the stairs here, kind of like this. Uh, you can get good RNG. If you get acid spray, that's good. Uh, if you get butt slam, that's bad. If you want to play it really safe, what you'll end up doing is you will actually end up throwing water. And you throw water, what will end up happening is you can just entirely um, avoid having to worry about that gamble. So if you're not a gambling person, just throw the water. Speaking of throwing water, we have two more water throws we're going to be doing. Uh, this is why I don't like throwing the water there, because you will need one for a couple more parts. Uh, this key is not going to spawn directly in front of us. Throw it earlier than you think you need to. That's all I'm going to say right there. Like, it's not like, don't throw it super early, but like the moment he starts kind of approaching you, you can kind of throw it. And now we're going to be getting the key item. Uh, long story short, lore-wise, if you're into lore, let's talk about that. Uh, Kuroder beat up an old woman, and she died to the acid bath. You need to get her shawl, because she's cold. Uh, so we're trying to get the shawl. Now, the big thing, and this is actually a minor route deviation from what I do. Uh, so I am learning new stuff as you're learning it, in a way. I was watching Batake's run, and I realized he grabbed an extra green arrow I don't normally grab. So I'll be instructing you to do this as well, because more green arrows is kind of nice for boss fights, even though they take up, like, if you can find one that's easy to get, it's nice. Also, the answer to these are always the same. It is, like, uh, bottom, top, bottom, and then this one falls down before anything else. Take that exact route. Um, what happens if you take the wrong route is the planks will fall. Do not try to, like, oh, what if I take the easy way? What if I try going faster? You won't go faster. All right, so you're going to keep running all the way down. If you need to use perfume, you can. You're going to throw water right when you're up. Uh-oh. I whiffed it. That's fine. Let's play it a little bit safe here. There we go. That's okay. I missed the water throw. Uh, sometimes there's tight turns, and not everything was perfect. Uh, I can actually show you where to get some backups. This isn't a, a big deal. Alrighty, so we have Corroder. There's a few different strategies you can do here. Uh, the idea behind it, though, is he is now going to be a six-charge binding. So, the five-charge rule is now gone. You need to get a full charge. Uh, the best way of doing this, if you don't care about... Um... Oh, it doesn't make Kailana. Yeah. The best case of doing this is if you don't care about... Counting? If you see a trail at the end of your arrow, you got it. But it's going to be six. So, you can count one, two, three, four, five, and six. Anyway... Alright, counter attack. Let's see. Actually, it looks like I got a pretty good counter attack there, by the way. Four. Five. Oh my god, he dodged it. So, fun fact about this guy, a three charge will stun him, so if you need to kind of get him off you, a three charge will be good. By the way, I'm going for a riskier, I think, strat here. I don't know why I'm doing that. Fine. Yeah, he is the juking boss. Let's see. Now, getting bindings immediately is good, but you do want to be careful. Uh, the big reason why is because you get uh, three by you get a uh, you can get a spirit bomb in three. Uh, you don't want to get that immediately because then you won't be able to kill him. 
Uh, being able to stock these and get them to about maybe 66% health to be good. Do keep in mind I'll be losing a bit of time for that green arrow grab. It's not the end of the world. Knowing the range of the attacks is going to be important, I think that kills. And then I think we should be fine on time. I did mess up a little bit there. I probably should have just played it normally and maybe, uh... Maybe after I got, like, two bindings, I probably could have gone in, but... That went well. A lot of this fight's gonna be feeling it as well. Yep, dead. Okay, we're good. Yeah! It's nice to go in depth every now and again, Sether. I don't always kind of get to fully explain why the games work the way they do. So I thought, hey, why not kind of go over it? So, weird part about this is I don't know how good or bad that time saver loss is going to be. Uh, that could be borrow time for later. Uh, I'm not too worried about that right now. Also, I'm not going for like a dedicated PB on this. Um, in theory, I can always grind this out later, even today, if I wanted to. And I'm not too worried already because I already noticed I had minus seven and I'm moving a lot better. It's kind of weird. Something about New Year's really made me think about basic movement and I've been doing better at that. I'm not sure why. I don't get me wrong, I'm still walking a little bit like an alcoholic, but I've been doing a little bit better. Also, having to go to menu and losing my perfume is going to be a double-edged sword. I'll be losing two bits of time. However, uh, luckily for me, I do know where to pick things up, and we'll be back to our normal resource in a moment. Uh, we're now going to be entering uh, Corroder's level. First things first, uh, if you lost a perfume, you can grab one right here. Lavender water. La okay, lavender. Sorry, lavender. I'm calling them perfumes or lavenders. Sorry, I, I don't know why I keep calling them perfumes. It's in my head. It's a good backup grab. Um, I used to be incorporated in the route. However, you know, if realistically not having to grab that is going to be more ideal. And Sewer Tower is immediately going to throw you in one of the harder levels of the game. Uh, I would argue right now that if you are going to have problems learning this run, it's going to be here. Uh, this area has a lot of risky strats, has a lot of stuff to kind of cover. I recommend playing it safe. So we'll kind of go over a lot of that. Alright, so right after you grab that key and go to the door, you will be summoning Chopper, the next boss. So, Chopper's RNG to begin with, but you're going to run through him. You're going to hug the right. If he spins, you will eat a hit. He doesn't always spin. I got unlucky. In fact, I'm getting very unlucky. Luckily, um, you know, as long as you get the sword, it's fine. That is RNG, by the way. I kind of lost the dice roll. If you are feeling risky, you can throw water. If you're feeling, you know, scared, you can throw water at him. It's not the end of the world. You have enough. And the order doesn't quite matter. It's me you do have to go to... I usually just kind of match B1 and then, like... The order I'm doing, I'll make sense in a bit. Yeah, B1. And also, I go right because right here is a special item. It is an invisibility ring. This is a safety item. If you're doing really good, you don't need this. However, I like grabbing it. Uh, he'll always spawn behind you, and you're going to be grabbing the first item, which is right here. It's going to be inside this. So, on the first one, you should be able to run through him. Unless he keeps spinning, which, uh... Yeah. I'm getting unlucky with spins. So, RNG on attacks. He can spin, he can slice, he can throw. Throwing's the best, because it won't hit you. By the way, match the first option, B2. Here's the fun part. I haven't talked about this yet. But the way panic works is a little bit weird. Panic isn't based on you getting hit or dodging attacks. If you are attacked in the general vicinity, you will get panicked. So even if they miss an attack near you, it hurts. Anyway, with this box, um, you can throw the water immediately, although it is a bit risky. Uh, mainly because of that turn, I got panicked. Uh, I think I should probably be okay. I'm just gonna use the lavender. I'm having really bad luck with some of these sections. By the way, if that hit me while I was panicked, that would be an immediate kill. So the Lavender was a very good call. 
Uh, here you'll be going to P3. Alright, B3, not P3. So I, that's why I usually do it the way I do it, because I can just mash, I mash, and then the next one, I go right. It's a good way of remembering this, too. Um, we do all this because we have to do electrical wiring puzzle. The puzzle's weird because it's just one to the left every time. Uh, that's the best way I can explain it. RNG can definitely vary. I don't mind it, but like... It depends. Um, eating a hit here is, I you know, not good, obviously. Um, you can actually throw your water. In fact, you should. However... The reason why I didn't throw the water is it's always really hard to tell when he's going to show up. Because you can't see the hallway. He will always show up there. So it's RNG depending on how good or bad you get it. Ideally, you want him to either be really aggressive or really passive. I kind of got medium, which is not very good. I'm having a mean chopper. Uh, anyway, time for the hardest puzzle in the game. You have to help this ghost. So you're going to grab these glasses and hand them to him. He's right here. The guy couldn't move five feet to find his glasses. He, you know, in all fairness, there are his glasses. Maybe he couldn't see them. Anyway, run closer to the light because if you try mashing on the body, you'll get like extra dialogue and that's not good. Thank you for the follow, by the way. All right, so right now, you're always gonna be getting this knife throw. It'll never hit you, but you will get full panic. That's normal. Funny enough, your water count here can dictate how you play the game. I currently have a full water count and I shouldn't, but I do. Uh, I could technically leave this whole area with a full water count, as funny as that sounds. Anyway, it will be B1 once again. Oh, this whole level is running away from a boss. This one's harder because he's much more close quarters and he uh, is much more aggressive than the other ones. So you have to be very, very careful. Anyway, RNG will dictate how this goes. If he's behind you, that is a good RNG. If he's in front of you, that is bad RNG. He's gonna be, uh... In front of me, probably. Nope, behind me. Okay, I should get RNG. So, behind you is good RNG because you'll be able to time the water much easier if you're running into you, meaning you can hit it. Um, if he's in front of you, it's harder because you have to throw it, much, you have to throw it twice and faster. And then at some point, it'll show up with the camera. I'll hit him with the water, and then you can just go straight to the end of the level. Do not take the elevator again. You don't need to take the elevator anymore. I made that mistake a few times. It's bad. Kaloran, thank you for tier two for 30 months. Enjoy the emotes and the scissors, and thank you. I'll be doing good. Okay, if you are low on waters, here's what you can do. You can refill here. That's why you can use water. You can refill in this room. Right there. Now, here's a neat glitch. Just kind of hug the left and mash X. Alyssa has really long arms, and she can grab the arrow right here. I'm not sure why that works, but it does. So I'm going to try to remember the order. But if I remember correctly, the plan here is when the fight begins, you want to land a green arrow as soon as possible. You're a... This is gonna be something bad. This is gonna be an insult. Probably gonna be an insult. Go ahead. Come on. Oh, it's not an insult. Well, oh, okay. Usually when people don't spell the whole your, I'm kind of worried. All right. Hit the green arrow. You're gonna get a binding. That's a six charge. He will throw. He should throw ideally. So it takes at least three to reflect the throw. However, getting a throw means you can get a maximum. Wait, hold on. Oh, that's bad. Not the end of the world. So I'm gonna get the full charge here. You want to ideally get a three charge with the green arrow, but I didn't get the proper spacing. 
All righty, that's fine. All good, all good. Uh, the fight wasn't the greatest. For what it's worth, it's okay. Uh, if you're wondering what went wrong, I actually wanted to be a little bit more aggressive because then you probably could have gotten a other thing. You probably could have gotten the um the total thing. I guess the other strat you can do there is you can charge the binding and then you can green arrow, and that could probably be a good enough to um get the spread. The main thing there is you want to counter a throw so you can get a three charge immediately. It saves a lot of time. And uh, right now we're entering the Mosquito Hall. So uh, for the Twitch side, I need to play an ad. I'm going to do it here. Why? This part sucks. It's boring. It's like the major downside of the run. It happens right here. So I'm going to do it now. Ready? At Prime Gaming. Sub to the channel. Ad block. Here we go. Yay. Alrighty, so this part of the game's pretty easy. There are three colors and three ghosts. Start with red. The way they move is actually RNG a little bit. Uh, depending on your water, you can do different things here. Uh, right now, I had four waters, so I'm actually going to throw two of them on and some of the portal early. You'll be returning red to the pedestal right here. Well, thank you, Freddy. One, two. You don't need to do that. I had two waters, so it felt right to do that. It's actually a little bit risky to do that because if you accidentally step in that, you end up losing a lot of time. But I figure if I have the water, males will use it. Hey, all morning, so I think two over six months. Enjoy the emotes in the series and cheers. You're doing good. Enjoy the green scissors, too. Hope you're doing good. So, puzzle-wise, this is very simple. You're matching colors. Red goes with red, blue goes with blue, yellow will go with yellow. So the downside now is that the amount of water you will throw on ghosts is actually randomized. The ghosts move on a cycle. I have no idea when the hell it starts, but they move on a cycle. So you're caught on the bat end of the cycle. You must throw water. You only have five. Ideally, you want to throw none. When you're returning, you can gamble because the ghost will die the moment you return the proper thing. So you can have a little bit of leeway with that. Also, this is the OST. It's not a difficult puzzle, but managing the ghost is the difficult part. Especially knowing what to gamble and how to gamble it. The ghost might be following me. I think it'll fall. There we go. Alrighty, so I kind of got what I expected. This isn't so bad. Although I would really like it if I can use only one water for the next two ghosts. Uh, you'll also be grabbing the green arrows in both of these halls. Make sure you do that. All right. You know what? I actually had really good water balancing because now I will be able to go. Is it possible there's no water used? In theory. Uh, you. I almost always have to throw water. In theory, you could. In practice, not so much. The game can decide. I wanted it to be a horror game and just kind of, you know, unintentionally campy. Oh god, I need a little bit of music. But no water mean a waiting game. If you run out of waters, you would refresh them. You should always have five starting off, and then you can refresh it on that one. So if I wanted to refresh here, I could. All right, that was actually a pretty good section, funny enough. And I finally drink water. I get water now. Mm. I have been waiting to drink water the whole run. I've been working out my throat today, Chad. Anyway, I'll be getting a refresh because you need five. By the way, make sure you leave with five. 
You must leave with five. You need five getting out of here. I can't stress that enough. That's the only major thing here. Welcome back from the ad. You must have five exiting that room. Alrighty, so here's where the run will be going back to Chopper. You know all those items you've been grabbing? Perfumes, rings, all that? This is why you're grabbing them. You must go through a Chopper section with no water. Why? You need two water to open the portal. You need two water to open another portal. Open it now. Now, here's the fun part. Chopper will be chasing you the moment you hit this car. There is a cabin. You can go in there. There might be some stuff to help you. Ideally, you won't be going into that cabin. It's on the right side. Here's the thing you're going to be doing. You're going to be using the invisibility ring after gaining some distance. So you can do it like right here if you want. I usually wait a little bit more. Some of it earlier. Either way, the idea is you're using the invisibility band immediately. Oh, nice trick. <laughs> uh, this hopefully should buy you some time. You can get lost. If you get lost, it's really good. Uh, ideally, you'd want a lavender here because that would prevent you from dying. However, I'm going to be playing a little bit risky, possibly. Oh, there he is. So, him hitting you is entirely RNG. Alright, we're going to be using the ring again. So that's why I brought two rings. I like doing this. You don't need two rings. Uh, some people can do this without the two rings. Uh, you do want a lavender normally. I'm playing without a lavender. This is bad, but uh, yeah. And then you need to hit this with the water. Because that's how you get the key. Once you have this, you just go back to the graveyard. Or go back to the, like, the main hub. So, do not die. You normally want to go on the right side. I took a weird path, but I would rather live. You go through this uh, little uh, grave here. The sad part is it's actually really lucky. Okay. Thank you for the follow, by the way. Taunts are good. Throws are good. Spin attack is pretty rough, and swings in general are pretty rough. Anyway, worked out. We're out. Uh, I have no resources left, but we should be fine, because most of the rest of the game will be using water. So at this point, um, you should be good on resources. There's still more you can grab if you need it. I can point it out where it is. But if you got to this point, congratulations. You have passed the hardest stalker in the game. Not the hardest encounter, but the hardest overall. Anyway, you're going to be dropping in the compasses. You'll be getting more water right here. Good. So I'll be showing you uh, the safer strat here. There are a couple of strats. Uh, Botsuke does one where you kind of position him in a way where he can hit himself. I won't be doing that one. Uh, just because the positioning for that is a little bit more difficult than I would want to do right now. But. Uh, we're going to be breaking this fight a little bit with the use of a green arrow. Thank you for the follow, by the way. Uh, I mentioned earlier, green arrows are pretty busted. Hi, Steady. Hope you're doing good today. So. Oh. That's just a puzzle item. You have to worry about that. Grab the red arrow here. Why is he hitting himself? <laughs> it's a good question. Thank you, Rebecca Flair. What's up? I'm not sure we're doing good. Doing commentator runs. I'm doing, doing good. My voice will be dead by the end of the day, but he'll probably be okay. By the way, um, this is just kind of really wobbly. I don't think I've ever died to this, and hopefully today won't be the day I die to this. 
just sort of balance the game around, you know. It's, you can wiggle a little bit. Don't die. You can die there. So, for this fight, the chopper fight, it's kind of weird. You have to land a green arrow on a counterattack. That is how this must work. Otherwise, you will fail. You will block it. So, when he's about to swing, I'm sorry you have mold. I hope you're doing all right. Yeah, it was a safe trip. Yeah, I got I got a nice PB for that. It's been going good, Dookie, and hope you had a fun trip to Sacramento. Really quick, here's the strategy for this boss. Run into him and then get a green arrow ready. Does it attack you? Charge. I'll counter it. From this point, you can start landing bindings. Whatever he throws, you must counter it with a three charge or more. Remember, six charge is the key here. And you're just gonna keep wailing on him. I got lucky. Don't attempt that. I got very lucky. You know how I got lucky? I got the exact recharge right when it hit me. But it makes the fight very trivial. Save. And dead. Yeah, my splits are like my pee. Red and gold. Ew. Or ow, I suppose. Hey, what? Don't worry about it. Anyway, Chopper's dead. And that is good with me. So, I may have been losing some time grabbing green arrows, but the payoff only comes later, and this will make safer routes for you coming later. And you shall see what I am talking about. Anyway, here's Dennis. You exist for two screens. I think they added Magical Edition to Clock Tower? Why not? I don't know. The Clock Tower franchise never really had any continuity after the first two games. Like, Clock Tower Ghost Head doesn't matter, this game doesn't matter. The Clock Tower series has no actual story. Alrighty. Can you re-aim? Nope! Once you aim, you're dedicated. You're going wherever you aim. By the way, there is a lavender right there. That is a lavender. You can grab it. There will be a couple more encounters that might be worrisome. I will not be grabbing it. If you need it, it's there. Again, I want to mention, by the way, what is Village? Oh, it's Village of Shadows. And by the way, uh, they already got redeemed. They already all got redeemed. So like, they're they're on the docket after GDQ. Where we'll be doing Village of Shadows new game and I think RE4 Pro new game. Anyway, this section is rough. You must go in this room first. Oh, all this will be on YouTube, Temple Warden. Hope you're doing good. But I'll, be, I'll be putting these on YouTube, so. Oh yeah, I should mention this. Crawling is a dedicated button. Like, you can't, you don't just crawl if you go up to it. You have to push circle to crawl. So, just keep that in mind. Anyway, the reason why you must go in that room first, because to use the mirror, you need the looking glass, which, um, if you go to the mirror first, an enemy will spawn. And if you don't grab the looking glass, you'll start chasing you, which is bad. So we ignore him immediately. Now it's time for Jemima. Oh, I hear that. Hell, man, it's always rough. Jemima's weird. Uh, normally she'll try to leave the moment you hop in here, uh, but she will come back. So, and throw that water and leave. And hopefully she won't be too aggressive. It looks like she is. 
Uh, I have almost always been eating a hit here lately. It's okay if you do, just be careful. I don't know why. Probably because I bonked on the wall. Anyway, after getting that one, you'll be going down here. The thing with Jemima is she has very safe attacks, if that makes sense. Like, she's not overtly hard. It's kind of weird because she's been getting harder as more been playing this. Uh, the funniest part is I've been getting unlucky off basic things, like I get body blocked. So, it's Jemima. That's why I said Jemima. All right, I do need to be careful though. So what I'm gonna be doing is I'll be throwing water when I need to, because we get a water refresh. I can be very generous with it. I missed, doesn't matter, it's fine. What's your crime? Probably murder. The answer for all these people is probably murder. They're, they're all murderers. Fiends. Anyway, there are three keys. We have all three now. Uh, the reason why we end on this one is because the final door is right across from this. Come on, Alyssa. All right, Ralph is a bit aggressive. Uh, that's actually why I'm wanting to throw water Showtime. early. I don't want to die. <laughs> that should be okay. All right. Yes, that's why we must do that. And then, right here, just, you know, activate the portal while that's going off. Grab more water. You want to end with five. And we're good to go. All right, now we're in the next hub. I do wish my health were a little bit better, but we'll probably be okay. So, we're now in the final hub of the game. This is the last stalker section of the game right now. And this one is going to be tough early, easy late. One of those deals. Okay, also, I think it's a lavender right there, if I remember correctly. Like, let's see. For sure it is. It is. So, yeah. You need lavender right here. I don't normally grab that, but, you know, it's there. Anyway, with him. Throw it early. There is a very fun strat you can do where you can throw water at this and hit him at the same time. Uh, you don't need to do that. You don't need to do that. Leon is much more preferred making Catalina. That's uh, how you know you're learning. Otherwise, I don't think you're learning. A resounding Leon. What's up? Not much. We're doing good, Pedarius. There you go. Alrighty, so... Hardest room in the game is right here. You can fill the water early. I'm glad I did. You just need this one no. If you pass this room, congratulations. You have beaten the game. It's recommended that you hopefully have a resource for this. Uh, throwing the water should be good. By the way, good thing to grab the water. Also, oh, I should mention, whenever you're panicking, there is an RNG chance that you will, um, freeze. So don't be in panic. What does panic do? It means you're, uh, you, you'll die on if you get hit. Which I explained that a little bit earlier, but yeah. Anyway, that red arrow back there is not really worth grabbing. But we'll be grabbing this arrow, the two arrows in here, the green ones. All right, so at this point, you're, we're now gonna be in much better shape than we were. You probably could, I probably could have thrown a second water. However, I like to play it safe. It's funny because you use almost all your waters on Ralph. Because Jemima is pretty easy to bypass, but Ralph is hard. Yeah, 
There we go. Not bad. And the panic meters existed in many a games prior, I'd say. You know? Alrighty, back to the game, kind of moment of reprieve. That ghost is, they're not gonna do anything, they're a flub. Jemima time. Jemima, you must have one water form. Uh, I will mention you can throw water on other spots. However, ideally, you would want to not throw any water on Jemima outside of the first time. Alrighty, so you're gonna start on the fireplace. You go into the shovel. Now, the moment this is done, throw the water. Mass triangle. You'll get first crest, and we're out of this room. Congratulations, by the way. If you have done that properly, you no longer need water. It's nice, but you no longer need it. Yep, the range, uh, the range of the water is very generous. And a little bit of chocolate sauce. A little bit. The water range is very generous to the game. Like, it gives you a lot of leeway. Something else, it auto-aims a little bit. So if you just mash the button, it will auto-aim to survivors. Or, uh, killers. So, it's pretty convenient that you can just kind of aim it. Now, the reason why water is not going to be as needed is... If you're playing correctly and you move properly, Jemima attacks slow enough where you can bypass her attacks entirely. Like right now, we're gonna run through. Uh, she'll attack. However, I get to the door, that prevents her damage. So, in the past, we'd save water to or get more water to throw at Jemima, but with, uh, you know, bolder strats, you can bypass her entirely. Oh, so neat little reference to Clock Tower, uh, OG here. Uh, the crests you get are A, N, and D, which and is not the word it's spelling. It's actually spelling Dan, which is kind of fun. Dan. I think it's also supposed to symbolize names of the characters. Like you have Alyssa, you have Dick, and then you have someone, uh, I don't remember the other one. Oh, so you can just run through her. I think it's the mom's name, something like with an N. Alright, Nancy? Yeah, it's Nancy, that's right, thank you. Thank you, Eva. Anyway, let's see, Jemima's not a problem, run through every time. Okay, now comes a fun part. That's our flow. Yeah, we have some fun games on the dock today. It should be good times. I'm not too uh, worried about that. We're doing some uh, good stuff here. She seems way easier. So Jemima is hard. However, she has a quirk that makes her easy. So she does a lot of damage. The problem is her attacks have a terrible windup. So, in most cases, if you're bold, you can actually bypass her attack because you can go through doors, which kind of, you know, meme on the stalkers. If her attacks went through the door animations and stuff, she'd be much deadlier. But luckily for us, you can just sort of run through a door and she's done. Alrighty, now comes another fun part, by the way. Uh, this is actually a strategy I cooked up, and I discovered this is the old dice skip as they call it. They don't call it dice skip I named it Yellow Knights back in the day, and Yellow Knights it shall be. So, the moment you activate the D-Crest, the Knights will start uh, attacking. I don't know the exact timer. However, I do know that if you bump into too many things, it will go bad. So... You're gonna be going into the left sarcophagus. Coffin, whatever you want to call it. These are elevators. You need to unlock the door.
And then you're immediately going into this one. Iron Maidens? They might be Iron Maidens. By the way, you were just going to book it. Kind of like down leftish, you're just going to book. I messed it up. One time I die is the trick that I just. Oh my god, I hate it here. Well, usually it works. Don't know why that didn't work. Great stuff, right? It's all right because here's the fun part. I barely whipped it, by the way. I don't know how I went whiffed. I don't know what I bonked on. Yep, they will straight up kill you. Anyway, luckily the checkpoint in this room is very generous. This is the only good checkpoint in the game. So it's not major time loss. That was impressive. Shut up. Hey, if you want to make fun of me, you got to pay. That's the rules. Anyway, we'll do it normally. But yeah, normally you can actually run through that. I'm not sure why I didn't. I think it's because I missed a cutscene in the very beginning. Anyway, if you're doing it safely, wait for the horizontal one to move. Thank you, Sound 15 bits. See? Thank that was you. impressive. The Clock Tower 2. I play every single Clock Tower game. By the way, the Pixel game's the best one, easily. Tavlor, and thank you for the good going to Zal Putin. It's much appreciated. Anyway, do not dilly dally after pushing that lever. Uh, it actually is a pretty meanly timed section. Hey, kind of stop pushing the limit there, Taco Sauce. Don't be annoying. Oh, you make funny, we had to be good? Well, it's currently not good. Iron's game from Haunting Ground? Uh, they're pretty different games entirely. Like, once is one thing, but you're kind of hammering on being a bit of a dick. Anyway, the fun part is you get to do this trick twice. I could try it again, but... Actually, I think I should be able to try it again. You know, Chad, if I die twice, then you're allowed to laugh once. How about that? And yeah, uh, funny enough though, Sether, if you did grab the item in the very beginning of the game, it would protect you. Alright, let's see. Do I make it? Yep. And that's the example, see? That's what it should look like, right there. But yeah, this game is much more arcade-based Groove 2, that makes sense. Luckily for you, if you die there, it's not the most, you know, mean checkpoint. It's not nice, but it's not the most brutal one, luckily. Kind of like I got bodied in the castle. It's always wherever you do a commentator run where things are the worst, right? Alrighty. So, I'm going to be going with a safe shot on Jemima. Well, that's why the ones that the, the Clock Tower games are Clock Tower 1, Clock Tower 2, Clock Tower Ghost, and Clock Tower 3. It's very easy to remember that. Just don't use the North American versions. Clock Tower is the OG SNES one. Anyway, Jemima, here's the strat. Got a green arrow right here, you'll hit her. Got a green arrow right here, you'll hit her. So, uh, what you could do is you could actually end up just use one green arrow. And you can use a couple of charge shots in the other ones. However, I like using two green arrows. Gets the fight over with nice and quick, a little bit easier. Alrighty, now it's time for Ralph. I'll get a hit. Come on, Let's see, we're getting a couple of hits here. Alright, so I got a binding. I fire green at him. I didn't do what I thought it would do, that's fine. Alright. 
All right, so I got Bonnie on. That's fun. Well, Roth is probably the toughest fight in the game, I would say, which is why you actually save a lot of your green arrows. With the route we've been doing, I have been allotted... Actually, good thing I didn't use it, because I'm only allotted one green arrow on Ralph. I actually almost messed that up. Uh. Alright, not bad fight. So the green arrows you end up using is you save one for Ralph. Uh, you can have 200 Mima. You have one on Chopper. Uh, actually, one on Chopper 1, one on Chopper 2. Which is why you end up grabbing the um, you know, one in the library and you grab the one in the um Corroders area. Now, every other colored arrow in the game I have grabbed, the reds and the greens, all of those are for the final boss. Final boss is a really easy fight when you know what you're doing. If you don't know what you're doing or you waste all your uh ammo, you're dead. Uh, that being said, uh, for Jemima, you could do the other strat to get another green arrow on Ralph, but, like, honestly, I think Jemima kill, quick kill is fast. Is there strats when you accidentally use an arrow too many? Uh, kind of. I think they do zero flow, yeah. So, the strategy if you run out of arrows is, uh... I'm gonna call it phase one. You'll notice phase one of what I'm about to do. If for some reason you're short on arrows, you just have to do phase one again, okay? Also, you've been grabbing every arrow you see right now. Also, someone asked earlier, if you die, do you uh, reset? If you're going for PV, yes, absolutely. If you're, you know, this is a commentator run, doing no reset. Because, you know, a lot of these runs aren't to show you the perfect run. Very often it's to show you a consistent run, what you do, and what pitfalls can happen. I actually don't mind eating a death during speedruns explained runs because you get to see a very real side of what you might see. I think a lot of content on YouTube that that uh, does commentate runs, while they are good, um, one of the issues is that you never get to see a run in depth as a player. You only ever get to see it as kind of a, uh, a commentator. I think having a, a player tell you, hey, this is what's going on, you get to see a lot more in depth you wouldn't normally get to see. Anyways, now time for the final boss. Good news! Final boss bindings are a five charge again. I have no idea why the hell this is the case. Uh, they decided that the final boss, you can bind him with a five charge. That's good for us. The final boss also has a uh, double health bar. He will take three spirit bombs to kill. More if you don't have the arrows. So, audio. Can you hear that? Charge up to five. Shoot. Fire one. Two, three. Round two right now. This is the strat. And yeah, they change your costume in the cutscene. You're kind of dancing around this table. Same. All right, there's the binding. So a fun shot you can do is if you get the spirit bomb while you're behind him, you can actually get an immediate five binding on him afterward. I'm gonna play a little bit safe. Two, three, four, five. So, get behind him, launch every arrow. 
One, one, two green, one red. This is what you've been saving for. It will always be two green, one red. And we'll get an immediate spirit bomb. Final boss is really easy if you do this strat. The only hard part is phase one. If you don't have these arrows, phase one three times. By the way. Oh, I got unlucky. And GG. I got a little bit of lucky there because he did a charge attack. Uh, the charge removes all bindings. Uh, ideally, you don't want the charge, but we got the charge. Anyway, yes, yeah, spam magical girl. Or magical boy, I suppose, in that case. Magic. The run's not over yet, but he is dead. So, uh, you're wondering, when does the run end? The run ends when you touch this final platform. Uh, you can go to that dust to dust. No, not the calories. If you want to yellow it, just run to the left and GG. Good fight. And that's Clock Tower 3. I did nine minutes faster than my old explain run, funny enough. Uh, this is still rough, but I kind of went over a lot of things. Uh, we had a death in the castle. And then, uh... Thinking about it, I don't know if I like the green arrow, by the way. Like, I don't know if I like the green arrow on, uh, Scissor Man. I mean, it's still worth knowing what to do. You can get a really good time with doing a lot of these. I think really where the run messed up was probably around, uh, here. Uh, on Corroder. I just had a bad Corroder fight. A lot of the run will be based on the fights. So, Chopper, Corroder, Scissor Man, Scissor, uh, Scissor Woman. So, yeah, anyway, that was Clock Tower 3. Hope you enjoyed it. If you're watching this on YouTube, remember to like, comment, subscribe, and uh, Clock Tower 3. Also, comment if you want to see, uh, you know, more like this. Over on Twitch, I'm doing a whole marathon these today. Why? I realize that I have a lot of games I haven't really done, and I want to do more of them. Plus, this is already nine minutes faster, and my PB is like a 118, so... Nine minutes felt pretty significant to me. GG's? GG's? What do you think, chat? I think it was good. I think it was well. We're watching the ending here. So sad. Well, it is a tragedy. The next game we can probably do... Let's see. I'm trying to think what the next one I want to do. I have a few games in mind. I'm in the exact order, though. How about we do Faith? I think Faith will be fun. More is... Good Christian boy. Oh, no, that stresses me out too much. We get it, we get it, but... Uh, I'll be, I'll be chilling. Anyway, we get a sweet ending. It'll be a good time. I like Clock Tower 3 a lot, by the way. I think this game's an amazing game to get into with speedrunning. It's very easy. Uh, there's not a whole lot of, like, difficult tech in this game. A lot of it's kind of just fundamentals. But it's good fundamentals. It's not bad fundamentals at all. Big yeah, grandfather jump scare. No, I skipped that cutscene earlier. I wanted to make sure we had a legit run. If you want that cutscene, it happens before the Dick Burrows boss fight, so... Right after she jumps on the gear. And that's Clock Tower 3. One last thing about this game, I kind of figures up uh, fun information. That was a bit of a can. I hope you're doing good. One last bit of information. Uh, you can actually tell if a run's spliced. Uh, I don't know how the fuck you add it up. But the ruler points. Apparently, this is heavily tied into how you play the game, and there's like a mathematical formula. So, in theory, your ruler points will always align to what time you got, or how you play the game. I think it's based on like items, damage, uh, everything, so... In theory, that would be a good way of actually telling how you did if that point is off. Anyway, GG. Uh, let's do Faith. All right.